What's going on everybody? Sean Daniel with Guitar Control here and today we're going to learn an absolutely newer classic Back to Black by Amy Winehouse. Awesome song. It's really only four chords. We're doing an acoustic representation of it that tries to get a lot of the rhythm along with kind of like the spirit of the song in it. So make sure to click the link below. I'm going to have the chords and where the words go for everything. But uh, essentially, it really sounds like this. We're going to do a bar chord version and a not bar chord version. So it sounds kind of like this. So, really, really great song. Uh, I think we're gonna start with the bar chord version first and then we'll do the unbarred version next. D minor, it's gonna be the first chord we're gonna do. Now you can play this D minor if you want. Or you can play this D minor if you want. First, let's start off with this shape because we can kind of play almost the entire song with just this shape, which is really nice. Point your fingers on the fifth fret of the A string. Ring finger, 7D. Pinky right behind that, 7G. Middle finger. Uh, six on the B string. You can get the fifth fret on the high E string if you're nasty, but if you just want to get the middle four, thus making it not really a bar chord, you can do that too. Again, we'll, we'll go over a couple different ways, but more than just the chord, the strumming is kind of what gives it the, the elements of the original production, which is really just fantastic. So uh, here's how it's going to sound again. So kind of like a percussive, old school type rhythm that we have going on. Again, you can do the same thing with an open D minor, 1 E, 3 B, 2 G. Either one of these chord voicings is going to work for the strumming, okay? So don't be deterred if you know this is a lot easier for you than this, don't worry about it. But we're going to use this as an example because you kind of get a better shot of what's going on here, right? So super slow, it's going to sound like this. Okay, so if we just kind of try to count it, we've got this first downstroke, and then a mute. And then after that, we're gonna do an up and a down in time. But it's really gonna be kind of like, and then back to a mute, so. Okay, that's gonna be the whole pulse of the song. And it's gonna have that kind of vibe where it's kind of peppy moving forward a little bit because of these, that kind of Right before the, the downbeat, we get a little bit of a upstroke. And then at the end, we have two upstrokes before that last kind of downstroke. Again, open is fine. It's a little bit more difficult to mute the open chords, which is why I like going with the bar chords first. You can see um, my fretting hand. See my ring finger? It has nothing to do with that chord when I'm playing it. It really is just helping with the muting. So really, before you go on to the next chords, just try to get that one strum strumming pattern down. All right, so now we can take the same shape and move it to the next chord, which happens to be a G minor chord. A couple different options on how we want to do this. If we want to take the exact same shape on the same string, we can move it all the way down to the 10th fret. Again, it's the exact same thing, right? From a D minor to a G minor. I'm more of a fan of going to the lower G minor, which is essentially pretty much the same shape, except you don't have your middle finger to hold down anymore. So you can kind of use it to get this minor bar chord voice going on. Or another thing that you can do is to kind of get it like this, which will get you in the non bar chord way to play this. But again, we're just gonna go three, five, five, and then three all the way down, okay? 
That's the G minor. It's important that you get the third fret on the G string because that's the note that makes it major. Happy, not back to black. That's darkness right there, right? So we've got a D minor. minor. B flat to A. Okay, so again, the great thing about this shape is it's the exact same shape for 75% of the song. The only way you have to change it is when you get to the G, you take your middle finger off and make it minor, okay? Which is sometimes easier said than done, that E string rooted minor bar chord, but not impossible, something you should definitely be working on. And then after that, we can just move it to the sixth fret, root it on the E string, B flat to A. So the whole thing is D minor, G minor, Major to A. Conversely, let's do it with the higher G minor. D minor. Sounds great. And in that version of it, you don't even have to change your shape. Just mold your hand into this claw and just kind of go around jumping from root note to root note. Now let's talk a little bit about how to do it in an open chord setting if the bar chords are a little bit tricky for you because you know we've all been there. You'll get there eventually for sure, but it's always good to have different options on how to do it. And it's just a good lesson in alternate chord voicings in general. So that D minor, like we said before, one on the high E string, three on the B string, two on the G string. Now we're really kind of aiming for the bottom four strings. And then now for this G minor, we're actually gonna play it as, uh, I'll give you some options, a G minor seven. And this is actually an interesting one, okay? So a G minor seven, the way that I usually play it would be like this, where we get the third fret, of the E string, skip the A string, three, three, and three, okay? Now that's still technically a bar chord. I said we weren't gonna do it with bar chords. So if you just take A major voice, like this, and move to the third fret, and then use either your thumb, some people use their thumb for this, or your pointer finger, you get a G minor seven right here. I know it doesn't say minor seven on the chord chart, but anytime you see a minor chord, you can always replace it with a minor seven, okay? So you can do it like this for the G minor, and the great thing about this is when you get to the B flat part, you just do this, right here, right? You just take the root note away from it. And then now it's a very similar sounding one, but without that G, that makes it technically a B flat chord, okay? And then we can move this straight from B flat to A. Okay, so this is kind of like an efficient way to do this in one spot, D minor. G minor seven. B flat. Then A. So kind of a cool way to do it and really staying in one spot. Now, again, I kind of like a little bit of the flair of uh, sliding around. I think you have a little more options when you use the bar chords. You can inflect them a little bit too. But you know, whatever, to each their own. It's just a couple different ways to talk about doing it. Now there is one other part of the song. And it's really kind of similar, but it's a bridge of sorts. And it's got a just D minor that you kind of just strum and hold. And then it goes to a B flat major seven. And then an F major, which is pretty cool. And then back to A. 
Okay, so again, a lot of these chords we've already done before. We're introducing a new chord, uh, an F, and we're turning that B flat into B flat major seven, stuff that you're gonna wanna know anyways. So we'll do them all open here. D minor, and then this is a very, you know, spacey open part of the song, however you wanna do it. You can still, the timing is the same if you wanna kinda keep that vibe going throughout it. But after this, instead of going to the G minor where we usually go, we're gonna go to B flat major seven. One of my favorite chords ever. One, A, three, D, two, G, three, B. And then the, the more you milk it, the better it sounds, right? After this, we can go to F. You can do a bar chord F. I just kind of like get in the middle of it. Shake it, really feel it, and then end up on A again. And then we can go back to D minor. Lift your pinky up to make it an A7 for dramatic effect, and then end on D minor. So, really great song from an, an all-time kind of legend in my book, even though she doesn't have like a lot of work out there. Amy Winehouse has a lot of great songs, and just a great vocalist in general, with incredible production from uh, Mark Ronson. You might want to check out some of his other stuff too. But just kind of a cool one, easy, four chords, you get to work on some different techniques, incorporate the timing of a band to try to get the vibe into an acoustic guitar performance, and it's just good stuff to know with uh, different chord voicings and stuff too. So let us know if you liked it, if you have any songs that you want us to uh, get after, let me know in the comments section, we'll get back to you, and in the meantime, check out some of the other videos that I've done on the Guitar Control channel, and other great instructors too. So again, hope to hear from you soon, and I will check you out later.